Hey folks, thanks for joining me today uh, for this short talk. Uh, Lyle Gwynn from Tropical Birding Tours here. And today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favourite areas for birding in the world, full stop. Uh, as a company, uh, we run more than 100 tours a year uh, to more than 70 destinations. So to say that this is one of my favourite places in the world uh, is really saying something. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about the deserts of the Maghreb in northwest Africa. Uh, of course, that primarily means Morocco. Um, so what makes Morocco so special? Uh, now there are a lot of things that make this country unique uh, and worthwhile visiting as a birder. Uh, one of the main things is the safety. Uh, it's one of the safest countries in Africa, uh, which breeds a very relaxed, calm, uh, simple birding style where you can fully immerse yourself in the bountiful culture and landscapes without worrying, uh, which is a big relief. Um, it's also full of unique landscapes uh, and experiences, uh, as well as culture, food, uh, and everything else you can shake a stick at. Uh, this is a truly unique part of the continent and part of the world, uh, and is unlikely to be anything like you've experienced elsewhere, um, especially on the African continent. Uh, so for first time visitors, uh, it offers an exceptional experience. Uh, one of the things about Morocco and the deserts of the Northwest especially uh, is the primary focus is on quality over quantity of birds. Um, obviously it's not the tropics, uh, you're not racking up hundreds of species, uh, but what you are seeing is extremely special, uh, very localized, uh, and in some cases extremely tough to find anywhere in these birds ranges. Um, so it really is almost an essential uh, destination for the traveling birder and especially the traveling African birder. Um. So to give you a bit of context, uh, Morocco sits right here in the northwest corner of Africa and zooming out a little bit you can see that it's quite lush uh, and green in the north where it borders Spain and Europe uh, but is quite rugged uh, and stony in the center uh, leading out to those those red dune deserts there in the east, uh, which is the edge of the Sahara. Uh, the two areas I'm focusing on here uh, are mainly this tract of stony desert that extends out into the red dunes on the, the upper right there, uh, and I'll briefly talk about the kind of coastal deserts of the, the bottom left box, uh, just down there towards the end. So before you even get to the deserts, uh, it's essential to cross the Atlas Mountains. Now these are no small mountain range, these are proper mountains. We're talking snow-capped, ice, the lot. Uh, these are real mountains. Uh, of course they have a lot of birds within them, so traveling down towards the deserts, uh, the birding kicks off in quite spectacular fashion with things like red-billed chuff, uh, contrasting nicely with the white snow, uh, birds like crimson winged finch, uh, which is quite unique, uh, and of course the endemic house bunting, uh, which is slightly drabber, but uh, a special bird in its own right. Uh, moving down a little bit in altitude, you start to enter these uh, slightly more lush valleys uh, amid the peaks. Uh, now this is where we start to pick up special endemics like Lavalence woodpecker on the right there, uh, Tristram's warbler uh, in the center, and of course Atlas horned lark on the left, uh, a rather spectacular bird. Uh, currently a race of horned lark, uh, but well worth seeing. Uh, so the first desert you come across will be the Stony Desert. Uh, now this is the first step down from the, the Atlas uh, and is the edge of the drier lands. Uh, this is one of my favorite areas. Uh, there are large expanses of open stony, gravelly, uh, deserty tracts of land. Um, and on first glance, they look lifeless. Uh, but when you stop and scan and listen, full of life. So waking up and birding in the shadow of the atlas, uh, like here, is quite spectacular. Looking up at snow-capped peaks while you're birding in the desert is quite the thrill. Sunrises and sunsets are spectacular, and that's when we'll be out doing our, our most productive birding. Uh, wheat ears are abundant in this habitat. Things like red rumped, white crowned, western black-eared wheat ears, as well as black wheat ear, desert wheat ear, pied wheat ear, and of course the endemic Maghreb 
or Western Morning Wheat here. Uh, probably the most spectacular of the bunch, uh, a really dapper black and white color scheme. Uh, it can be really tricky to track down, uh, not at all common. Uh, even within its relatively small range, it's extremely tricky to track down, but luckily there are a few reliable areas where we generally tend to find uh, this amazing endemic. Of course, larks are a central theme. Uh, birds like Lesser Short Toad, Greater Short Toad, Thecla Lark, uh, Crested Lark, uh, as well as the local form of Crested Lark, which has an exceptionally long bill uh, known as Machreb Lark here in the upper right corner. Uh, and of course, Thick Billed Lark uh, with the most enormous bill. Uh, even on its own, this is almost worth birding in Morocco for. It's an absolutely spectacular bird and really is worth the effort. Of course there are other birds to keep an eye out for. Uh, birding can be extremely productive in the mornings and the evenings uh, with things like black-bellied sand grouse, pin-tailed sand grouse, uh, trumpeter finches with their nasal wheezing calls constantly, uh, cream-colored courser, and a whole bounty uh, of other birds along the way. So one of the first images that comes to mind when we talk about Moroccan deserts uh, is of course the Sahara, one of the world's largest, driest deserts, uh, with its towering, rolling red dunes. Uh, and it's just an alien landscape. It's home to a whole bunch of, of special, unique, charismatic and enigmatic birds. So although the excitement of the birding will have been building uh, as you move down from the top of the atlas uh, through the stony desert, uh, it really reaches its peak once you reach the, the dunes of the real Sahara, out beyond Erkchebi, towards the Algerian border. So waking up to this view really lets you know you've arrived somewhere special. Uh, the traditional blue colours of Mazuga there, worn by the gentleman in the foreground. Things normally start off with a, a pretty spectacular display of sand grouse. Uh, it's something we're quite used to in Southern Africa, um, but this is this is something else entirely. We're talking thousands uh, of spotted sand grouse quite often. Uh, so with local guides that keep track of, of water sources, uh, we normally arrive just in time for these birds to come in and drink uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, and it makes for some exceptional experiences and views, but also photography. Uh, you can see here in the photo on the left, that's the end of my lens in the corner. Uh, and we were treated to just flock after flock of sand grouse coming through to drink. Now among them, uh, if we're very lucky, uh, we sometimes find crown sand grouse, which is just a, an exceptionally difficult bird uh, to actually get to grips with anywhere in its range. Um, but over the last few years it's become more reliable here on the edge of the Sahara uh, and probably represents the, the easiest opportunity to see this bird. Again, spectacular scenery uh, and these tamarisks down at the bottom of the picture, uh, these areas of scrub are where you find some of the more interesting uh, passerines that inhabit the edge of the Sahara here, uh, as well as masses amounts of migrants. Uh, with these small oases on the edge of the desert, you'll find high concentrations uh, of migrant warblers, uh, shrikes, etc. Uh, and it really adds to the excitement uh, of every morning, uh, seeing which suite of birds has turned up overnight. Of course the residents are where the real excitement is. Birds like Greater Hoopoo Lark uh, along the top row there. Uh, spectacular in its own right on the ground, but when it takes flight, those pied wings are just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's display flight flying up high and then dropping uh, with a whistle like a, a falling World War II bomb. Uh, it's just up there with the best birding experiences in my opinion. Of course the pallid African desert warbler down in the left corner there. Uh, barely distinguishable uh, in the Saharan midday sun. Uh, quite a strange warbler that spends a lot of its time feeding on the ground. Uh, always a, a pleasure to spend time with. And of course the dapper Desert Sparrow, uh, a real Moroccan specialty uh, and really quite a, an attractive bird, uh, often occurring around camel dung. Of course, migrants and other special residents uh, are varied and interesting. Uh, birds like Spectacled Warbler here give abnormally good views on migration in open areas. Uh, newly recognized subspecies and species such as the Saharan Olivaceous Warbler. Uh, as well as endemic residents like Temminck's Horned Lark, here in the top right, a much more pallid 
white and black tan form uh, of the hornlark, as well as Fulvus chatterer uh, and the stunning local Machreb magpie, uh, very similar to the magpie found in Europe, but with that blazing bright blue eye skin. Just an absolutely fantastic looking bird. But it's very difficult, of course, to beat the phenomenal Musier's Red Start with its black, white, and red color scheme. Uh, truly a next level bird, and again, almost worth it on its own. When it comes to enigmatic birds, nightjars are often up there uh, amongst the top. Now, can you see the Egyptian nightjar in this photo? I'm sure some of you can already but I'll put a box around it for you there. Uh, now this is one of the least seen night jars, I would say, uh, in Africa. It takes a, a little bit of an effort uh, and being in the right locations. Uh, and even among cryptic birds within the family, this is, this is up there as one of the more cryptic of the cryptic. Uh, really lovely photo by Ken Behrens here, uh, showing just how pallid uh, and camouflaged the bird is. Of course, other nocturnal birds are around, uh, we quite often bump into the Makhreb form of Little Owl, which is not uncommon in these deserts. Uh, Eurasian Scops Owl is often seen uh, in the Tamarisks early morning as a migrant moving up towards Europe at this time of year in March to April. But it's really the Faroe Eagle Owl uh, that gets most of our attention as far as night hunters goes. Really a, a large, beautiful pale form uh, of an eagle owl, uh, often found in these caves within dry riverbeds called wadis. Uh, it can take a little bit of time to locate, uh, but when we do, the views tend to be quite spectacular. And of course, who can argue that the scenery is just out of this world? It's phenomenal. Uh, sitting back with a a tagine and some couscous in the evening and watching the the stars rise above the Sahara with a incredible orange glow bouncing off of the dunes is is one of the world's top experiences for anything in my opinion although it doesn't strictly fall under the category of a desert uh, here in Morocco the desert stretches all the way to the coast uh, so you can be stood still in the dunes still in the desert landscapes looking directly at the Atlantic Ocean um, which is quite exciting uh, and gives rise to quite a few specialized uh, species along the coast here uh, obviously the most famous of all is the northern bald ibis uh, there's around a hundred pairs left uh, breeding in Morocco uh, with two pairs I believe now uh, in Syria uh, as the remaining wild uh, population of this bird so obviously there's a key target and a key focus uh, of any time spent in the deserty coastal regions. Now actually tracking down northern bald ibis can be a challenge in its own right. Access to the breeding colony is no longer permitted, so you have to scour the coast for these highly mobile birds. Uh, here you can see a flock in the distance uh, flying off away from us after giving really spectacular views in the low scrub along the coast here. And when you do get a good look, uh, they're just absolutely unique. Even compared to Southern Bald Ibis, this thing is a, an outlier, a very strange, curious looking, almost morose bird, uh, but very, very worthwhile. Again, even on its own, would probably be worth a trip to Morocco. Of course, it's not the only thing worth looking at on the coast. Uh, there are several things worth stopping in for uh, that we don't get to see in Southern Africa. Uh, birds like Ordwins and Slenderbill Gulls. Uh, very common along the coast, uh, especially this time of year, looking lovely and pink in the case of Slenderbill Gull. And of course some wildfowl. Uh, there's white-headed duck uh, occasionally along the coast here, which is like a, a very large Makoa duck, uh, looking very brutish. Uh, and a marble teal, another bird that is under threat, uh, but here in Morocco is not uncommon uh, in the core of its range. So thanks for joining me. I hope that gives you a, a bit of a short and sweet overview of birding in the Makhreb deserts of Northwest Africa. Uh, it's certainly been overlooked uh, and not on the radar uh, of Southern African birders uh, for too long. So I, I hope you'll, you'll consider it uh, for a, a journey in the future. Uh, it's certainly rewarding, a lot of fun, uh, some really great birds, excellent cultural uh, and, and food experiences, uh, and just all round a very, very pleasant trip. Uh, for, for almost anybody 
non-birding partners and friends included. So feel free to have a look at our online virtual stand here in the fair um, or check out the website uh, at tropicalbirding.com uh, and I hope to travel with some of you in the future. Thank you for joining me.